Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Woke by Accident podcast. It is a weekly chat about socially conscious topics impacting the culture. I'd like to extend my gratitude in you listening to this podcast. It means everything to me, and I hope it is clear that this subject matter is so important to me. I care about our people, our future, and making a positive change in this nation. This episode is powered by Poddex. Do you find it difficult to come up with content ideas for your podcast? Or perhaps you've gotten stuck during an interview with a guest where you just have nothing more to ask. Try Poddex today. Poddex is the best all-in-one podcast idea generation tool. You get everything from episode ideas to interesting conversation starters for interviews engaging discussions for your live streams, and even social media content ideas. With this tool, you don't have to spend weeks trying to come up with content for an episode or unique questions for your guests. Just shuffle the cards, pick one at random, hit the record button and get started. Now you can make better content, have more fun while you're at it, and get your viral moment all with Poddex. Head over to poddex.com and use code C4C. Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Woke by Accident Podcast. And this episode is especially for the Content Creators of Color Collective Podcast Challenge. Welcome. Today I wanna talk about a case that you may not have heard so much about in the news, but we definitely want to amplify on this particular platform. It is about Lauren Smith Fields. She was the 23 year old young lady from Connecticut who was found dead following her date with a 37 year old man she met on a dating app. A lot of information has been released to date and the family has made some accusations and expressed some really strong concerns. So what I would like to do is give a high level of where the case stands now so that we can um, provide updates as this develops further and also offer some humanity to this case. A lot of times when young women are dead and there are drugs involved or whatever the scenario is, people jump to conclusions with opinions and the sympathy and the empathy is lost. And so we definitely want to bring the humanity to this case and the concern for women, especially black women in this matter. And so um, I want to do that with this particular episode. So first, I did want to share some information that we've learned about um, Lauren Smith Fields. Now, Lauren was born in Bridgeport, Connecticut on January 23rd, 1998 to Chattel Fields and Everett Smith. She attended Stamford High School in Stamford, Connecticut. She had ambitions to become a physical therapist and she was currently enrolled at Norwalk Community College. Her family held a march on January 23rd, which would have been her 24th birthday, and they called for justice as they asked for answers about her death from the police department. According to the Washington Post, one of her friends, Veronica DeLeon, described her as loud and boisterous with a great personality that Lauren made others feel seen and welcomed when they were in her presence and also shared that in the last few years, Lauren had dabbled into creating beauty and travel content on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. Her friend also shared that Lauren was focused on positive affirmations and cleansing her living space with sprays and sage. So now I want to look at the events of what allegedly occurred leading up until her death and where we are in the matter now. She had this date with the 37 year old Matthew LaFountain. They met on the app Bumble. Now, according and this information comes from thecut.com. According to LaFountain, he recalled arriving at Lauren's apartment around 9.30 the night before. 
and they had matched on Bumble three days prior. If you're familiar with the app Bumble, you have matches, I guess, similar to some of the other ones where you swipe to the left, swipe to the right, and you will match with people based on certain criteria. So they had matched three days prior, according to his account. And he states that she asked him for $40 for her nails and that she asked for him to meet her at her place with the tequila. He goes on to state that they, he came to her house with the tequila. They played games. They had food. They watched a movie that she went to the bathroom. She vomited. At one point, she went outside to get something from her brother. She went to the bathroom for 10, 15 minutes. He states in the police report that he found it odd, but he didn't say anything because he didn't know her that well he states that she fell asleep during the movie he carried her into the bedroom and slept next to her that he woke up at 3 a.m to go to the bathroom he heard her snoring and then at 6 30 a.m he woke up to find her not breathing she was pronounced dead at 6 59 a.m and that would be december 13th the medic stated that she had not been alive for at least an hour. So at that point, I'm thinking, or was there an opportunity to maybe do CPR or something like that? But, you know, she was snoring at 3 a.m. Now he got up, he went back to the, gotten back in bed with her. I don't know, it just seems odd. It seems like there was an opportunity to try to, um do a CPR to try to revive her if there was an hour where she possibly could have been revived based on that information. That's just what's going through my mind. And then they state that LaFontaine was frantic, visibly shaken, but he was not taken into custody. And as of January 26, he has not been named as a person of interest, nor was he detained at the station for questioning. And then the family of Lawrence Smithfields, her brother stated that he was told They didn't bring him in because he seemed like he was a nice guy. Also, no one in Smithfield's family was notified of her death. Apparently, the police spoke to her landlord, but they were unable to track the contact information for her family. Her mother ended up going to her apartment the next day. And that's where they found a note on the door stating, if you're looking for Lauren, please contact this number. And upon calling the number, she was informed of her daughter's death by the detectives from the police department. And the mother stated that she had to wait over an hour. um, And she was kind of at the runaround dealing with the detectives who she was speaking with on the phone. The police did not do a crime scene investigation until later that week. And it was the case was reassigned to a different detective than who initially worked it. So that's interesting. Also, the family noted that when they got there, some items in the apartment were not collected. That would seem to be pretty important pieces of evidence the cups of the alcohol, plates, lubricant, blood-stained sheets, I believe a condom wrapper and the condom in the trash can, uh, unidentified pill, and all of these items were not collected and taken by the police for evidence, which seems odd. And so the family's lawyer states that no evidence has been submitted to the forensic science lab. The family is now planning to sue the city for failing to properly investigate her death. The family's lawyer, who is Darnell Crosland, he has issued a notice of claim announcing that they intend to sue Bridgeport Police Department for its handling of the case. And they believe that the police department had been was racially insensitive, not taking her death seriously and failed to properly investigate the case. The attorney, Crossland, also has alleged that the first detective, Kevin Cronin, 
had some sort of connection with Matthew LaFountain and is currently under investigation by the city's internal affairs department, which is why there's a second and new detective on assigned to the case rather than the first one, which, you know, seems to be an odd factor. And then this also another factor is that the lack of media attention in this matter um, because of it being a case surrounding a young African-American woman. The family has noted that, that there's definitely seemed to be a lack of attention to this story. And in comparison to some of the other stories, such as Gabby Petito. And so that um, has also been noted. The Connecticut medical examiner ruled her death an accident. On January 24th, autopsy results came in from the chief state medical examiner, concluding that she died of acute intoxication due to the combined effects of fentanyl, promethazine, and hydroxazine and alcohol, and it was ruled an accident. But because of the fentanyl being present in her system, the Bridgeport Police Department has opened a criminal investigation in the narcotics department with the help of the DEA. So there, uh, they'll be investigating the police department's interaction with her family from the internal affairs side, and um, they will look further into this matter. And then the family is um, also getting an independent autopsy, and that is still pending. So we definitely will do an update once those details have been shared with the public. But definitely want to share this story as a conversation that we should be having with um, one another about when someone goes missing how important it is to share and apply pressure because it definitely was the pressure that the family put on the police department that made things move a little faster as far as it being determined a criminal investigation after they ruled it an accident so quickly right and then we still don't have a clear explanation to the family as to why the last person to see her alive is not at least a person of interest or brought in for questioning that just seems really odd in a case like this uh, with a man woman and you know with there being the presence of condom wrapper it's assumed that perhaps they did have intercourse but that's not really explicitly stated and so it just seems like a little further investigation is needed here also another factor that seems to be missing is the communication that was shared in the bumble exchanges um i I did see that the president or representatives from the dating app make a statement indicating that they would be willing to comply with authorities and pass along whatever is requested but seemed like that would have been one of the first things that they asked for hey let's get those text exchanges on that app seemed like that's something really simple that could have been collected and that's if even they weren't going to share it publicly in the media that needs to be in the investigation for sure because that would speak to it, it just seems like it's relevant and it needs to be included in the investigation Other thoughts that I have about this is uh, we should be having conversations about women using dating apps. And so maybe just having conversations about letting another person know where you are and that type of thing, because it really can um, be scary out here. You're out here, you think you're speaking with someone who has your best interest or that you have a shared interest and you could possibly be meeting someone that really could be your love interest or you know the person for you and something like this can happen now at least he you know did not run and he did call it in but we need this to make a little more sense and get some more answers for the family so that they have the proper closure. And then this doesn't happen to someone else. Maybe look at his history of 
who he has encountered on the app too, that may give some additional information that may be helpful in this case as well. So I definitely appreciate you listening today and we will definitely provide an update as more details become available. We thank you for listening and take care. At this time, we're going to go ahead and conclude the episode. We greatly appreciate you listening. We invite you to follow us on social media, on Instagram, it is Woke by Accident Podcast. On Twitter, it is Woke by. On Facebook, it is Woke by Accident Podcast. We also have the new website up, www.wokebyaccident.net. Please check us out and also follow us on all of your favorite streaming platforms and please leave a review and share feedback. You can also reach out by Gmail, wokebyaccident at gmail.com. And every time you listen, we appreciate it so much. Thank you for listening and take care.